Thank you so much, Penny, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shalini and Dr. Ajit for having me here. Hello, Dr. Roderick. So it's really nice to be, have, be in a type one symposium as always. So I will just share my slide. I don't know where it got. Just give me one second. It was ready and suddenly it's... Yes. So uh, after the two very, very uh, inspiring knowledge-based talks, which made me wonder about the inadequacy of care in type 1 diabetes, actually, because when we are looking at prevention, we are looking at newer drugs, then we are looking at diagnosis beyond type 1 diabetes. Uh, I think it is very apt that we end this session with talking about at ground level what is happening in India and what role can we play when we are trying to take care of our children, our youth, and now lots of adults with type 1 diabetes. So far, for so many years, it was not a very big issue in various conferences because all the adult physicians did not see that many uh, people with type 1 diabetes. This was mainly thought to be with the pediatricians. But now, when the survival is good, the facilities are more, we have so many adult patients and we have to be there for our people with type 1 diabetes. So what is our goal of therapy if we see and then where do we stand in India? So the goal cannot be just, uh, as we always say, glucocentric of having a normal blood sugar level. The goal in India for the entire type 1 community is to have access to a positive ecosystem. And that ecosystem is of medical care as well as psychosocial support, because these are children who are growing up, becoming adults and becoming very productive members of the society. And hence, it has to be a comprehensive system. Surely, it's not too much to ask for in a country which is so uh, rich to say, I mean, there are many Indias in India, but it is rich in terms of culture and money and medical science. So why is it so difficult? And that is what we are going to talk about. So broad components of type 1 care, this is like very, very broad components, is early diagnosis. And that is what we were talking earlier than even the uh, symptoms as was taken by Dr. Dan, which makes uh, so much sense. That would be wonderful because even now children are actually detected in BKA in the rural setting or even in the urban setting, which means coming to the next point is the awareness. Awareness amongst doctors, awareness amongst uh, people amongst, amongst the healthcare providers, then access to qualified healthcare. There is still, uh, I mean, healthcare may be there at a various PHCs, but is there access to people who understand type 1 diabetes? Still in rest of hospitals, if a such surgery is happening, people will keep a person NBM overnight in a person with 10, uh, type 1 diabetes and stop the insulin. And that happens every other day. So we really have to have qualified healthcare with knowledge of type 1 diabetes. And then continuous and affordable insulin and monitoring is still a basic need which is not yet fulfilled in India and self-management via structured education and technology. So if we look at all these components, where are we today in India? Till now, we did not have numbers. Something very exciting happened this year and this is T1D index and that can be, you can see it on that site. And this is a type 1 diabetes index created by International JDRF by LFAC, Life for a Child Program, IDF. So all uh, people who are committed to type 1 diabetes actually got together and did a lot of research. They did questionnaires from more than 800 setups across the globe. All the studies and analysis gave them a way of having an index of actually assessing what is happening in each area, especially in a country like India where we don't have an index. So what is the current fact sheet for India? So current state of in 2022, the number of people living with type 1 diabetes in India is 8,60,420 as per the current measurement number. But the number of missing people due to type 1 diabetes in this year are 9 lakh plus. So average number of healthy years that are lost, if you assume diagnosis at 10, is one to two years. But loss to treatment and care is 4.4 years. Loss to complications is whopping 39 years because life expectancy is shortened by 39 years. And remaining healthy years, which life if diagnosed at 10 years, is only 28.7 years after diagnosis. So this 
reduction of almost 39 years of a potential life is happening in 2022 in a country like india and that is when why these numbers why we were very happy when the index came the type one diabetes index came because this is something we can tell the policy makers now where we can create a lot of movement where we did not have great numbers to show and that is something which is actually quite scary if you look at it so if you look at the growth today the population is growing at 6.7% per year and if you compare to the general population growth which is at 1.2% per year so this is a very rapid growth and expected number of people by 2040 in india is likely to be 1.8 million and still how many missing is 1.6 million are expected so that is the gap that we need to fill in india so if we can diagnose people in time currently one out of six is lost simply because of late diagnosis number of deaths due to non diagnosis is 7.7610 in 2022 healthy is years which would have been restored per person if the diagnosis had been on time would have been 3 years a number of additional people who would have been alive by 2040 is 123000 so these are all statistical numbers by analysis but they have been cross verified checked validated and so many things match so i won't go into numbers again but just enough to say that if we had timely diagnosis insulin and strips that's all we are talking about and of course the quality of life and better control happens with pumps and cgms that also has been shown so this is all that we could do and very simple number like hours of healthy life restored by one strip one extra strip gives 3 and a half hours of more life one testing one decision making because of a good glucose strip so this is a huge uh, way a benchmarking that can be done uh, the numbers that can be used to shake the policy makers the availability and the accessibility of care in india because in india we have so many indias a given for some is an aspiration for others so saying it emotionally passionately is not enough to change the policies to bring it into action we need lot of numbers and studies and with the type 1 diabetes index we have that today which is great so if you look at all the components that we talked about from awareness to access to care to education each is a challenge by itself in india because in some places everything would be available state of art would be available some places nothing would be available but if you look at the entire indian population we are set we are the largest number of people with type 1 diabetes in the world today simply by virtue of our population although our incidence prevalence won't be that high so look at the problems and i have just taken the liberty of going through it from my perspective of the experience of 20 years and what can we do so the problem here is awareness and early diagnosis we were talking about early diagnosis here i'm talking about early not is that early i'm not even talking about stage 1 2 3 a b c i'm just talking about even after symptoms have appeared that is the time also that often there is still not a suspicion of index of type 1 diabetes today so illiteracy social myths lack of dialogue the gp the first doctor that a patient goes to is another so what can we do to have early diagnosis and awareness at a local level all of us can have lot of advocacy program we can have newspaper articles radio talks specialists make as much noise as we can we can involve ngos in the entire country beautifully the type one scenario has risen in last 10 15 years there are wonderful ngos across the country run by people with type one diabetes by doctors by parents association so let's involve them and make a lot of noise when t1 the leaders and celebrities have to come out and talk about it and at the grassroots level the last doctor has to be made aware because that is where the diagnosis is missed that is where the child is not referred that is where they end up in dka as the diagnosis in a peripheral referral hospital so that is a scenario we wish to change at a national level we can have a structured advocacy program that goes to the last mile we can have a very targeted gp and public awareness program we can use the national media to disseminate information but it will take a lot of political will and that is why those numbers will be very important when we can present it to the political leaders we can make asha and ankanwadi workers very aware they are doing amazing job in so many fields and this could be one field where we could actually empower them so this advocacy by the children for the children is going to come a long way
Another aspect which is very important is qualified HCP. Now we know it's very difficult. It's a very specialized case. I being an adult physician, I have to study so much to take care of children. And I always feel I am missing somewhere. When I was looking at all these uh, uh, different kind of diabetes, I was wondering how many children have I missed what? So every day it is a challenge, yet at least the basic updating has to be there. We are not updated in the current cat line. So it's very important and I'm very thankful to all conferences in India to now showcase type 1 as we are doing today. But we need more CMEs, we need local bodies to create guidelines. We have Indian guidelines through ICMR and I talked about the ISPAD guidelines. Those are there. So, but we need the local bodies to actually talk a lot about them to all the pediatricians initially and physicians as well today because this is not a topic which is taken in local CMEs. It's always there in the national international forums, but it's not really a big topic because average doctor has one or two patients, but that now the time is changing and hence it's very, very important. Again, pharma support to reach the doctors can be taken at a national level like RSSCI is doing, creating centers of excellence, creating certified courses. There are so many of them, but how do we motivate them? How do we motivate doctors who are not treating a lot of type 1 diabetes to learn? That is a big task. So it's very important. Training is a very important process. And of course, no matter how much we know, if we cannot provide insulin and monitoring devices, we fall short. And most of the doctors I meet, all the healthcare providers finally say the patient cannot afford it. But Today, let us not compromise. It is not the era of remix insulin. Please go through the limited resource guidelines in ISPAD, which has come out for the first time. And I was very happy to be part of it. And we are absolutely saying no premix, except as a life-saving step initially till you can move on to a basal bolus, right? Glucometer strips are expensive. CGMS pump is very expensive, but scenario has changed. There are so many support groups. Life for a Child is working in India. RSSTI is supporting. Pharma groups are supporting. You reach out to any NGO, for example, Uran. You reach out to me. I will find a way to get insulin to your children wherever they are. So there are ways in the country that has changed from the last 10 years, the scenario has changed. Let us reach out and everyone should be on a basal bolus regime at least. And at a national level, the school health program and NCD clinics will make a big difference. The good news is, which is going to come in March, because I was talking to Dr. Sujoy Ghosh from Kolkata and he's on that panel and they have in writing accepted that juvenile, they call it juvenile diabetes still as a part of NCD program. So maybe what we have been fighting for for the last 20 years, maybe in coming March, we will find that it is a part of the school health program and NCD as the government, central government has promised. And if that happens, then maybe from March to 2023, we will see a new light where we will have insulins and glucometers, the best of them available at all PHCs also, because it will come to the national uh, non-communicable disease program. So that was a dream and it seems it is going to get true and this is something we should know and look out for. So medical supplies do matter. That is how these children will get a smile and survive. And last but not least is the self-management and structured education. Now problems is how do you educate? Where is the time? We don't have that many educators, but we have People also don't want to come and learn. So I, for example, teach my children, I have more than a thousand, we teach them but with the greediness of giving them insulin. I'm sure they don't come for learning initially, they come for free insulin. But in the garb of that, they are given good structured education and that gradually empowers them and then it becomes a focus. So that process has to set in. If we do not have diabetes educators, we can create our own Training program, as I always talk about in our area, we do not have any. So we created moms who became from the moms to the coach, and now they are diabetes coaches. But there are so many certified educator courses in the country today. RSSDI runs this, TFSI runs this, so, so many of them. So let us uh, focus on these courses and ask people to join them, but they will join them only if they get employment. So all of us. As diabetologists, if we give employment to a diabetes educator, only then people will go for these courses and actually work because ultimately they have to earn their livelihood. We should have a resource library, which currently RSSDI has and all international organizations have, but more Indian 
such a library will help us to remain updated. I believe everyone can learn. The most rural, the more illiterate, the more uh, maybe special learning skills, but it's up to us to find a way to teach them. For example, I just wanted to share with a smile. This is little Shraddha. She's in a remote village and she lives in a tin roof and six by six room, but she can actually count carbs and balance her plate. When she eats, she knows her macros and micros and she can take care of. So uh, it's up to us. If you really emphasize, every single person can learn. Another very important aspect which has changed in the country and come up is a lot of peer support groups and 24 by 7 helplines. So peer support groups are there. But if you are working in type 1 space, do try to give everyone with type 1 diabetes a 24 by 7 helpline support, whether it is for medical management or just sheer depression desperation, a number where they can reach out to is something that goes a long way in taking care of people with type 1 diabetes. So to every challenge, there is a solution. We are in a country where we are talking about the pump, we have CGMS, which ideally is best for people in the rural areas. So once we have it in the national program, the technology should go to the least uh, affording people because they need it most. That is where they are not able to do, cope on their own or from a simple earthen pot where they do still do not have electricity and hence they have to store their insulin in a pot like this. So solutions are there and I refer back to type 1 diabetes index before I conclude is this is very, very interesting that all of us as physicians, so what is my thought when I'm talking about India challenges and solutions? If all of us move to intermediate care, by intermediate care, we mean it's not very expensive. It's a few hundred rupees more only. But let us not give minimum care. Let us not give a premix insulin and one odd monitoring and one odd visit once in a while and the child survives and survives for 30 years and then dies with complication. Let's just move from minimal model to intermediate care and that gives a child a good 20 to 30 years of extra life. So if we give 100% access to insulin, we give them test strips and support them with self-management education. We can save approximately 5 lakh lives in our own country by 2040. I think that's a beautiful mission and now we have it in numbers, we have it in targets and as I said, three and a half hours by one single strip. I love that type 1 diabetes index, you know, kind of a statement because it immediately strikes home. That is what a simple thing can do. So if uh, we always thought when I started, I was always lost with the guidelines because I felt I can't do what the guidelines are saying and I always felt inadequate when I was treating type 1 diabetes because I felt, oh, I need a pump, I need a CGMS, I need this many monitoring, I need the best of insulins. But then uh, it's very important that even in the lowest resource setting that we do not go for the minimal model, but go for at least an intermediate model. And these are guidelines that are just coming up very soon. They'll be there and they're already up for observation on the SPAD page. And this is something for wherever we do not have resources, which could guide us to take care of our children in an optimized manner. So I just would like to share this picture before I end. Those are the children in 2007. Okay, the date has gone, it was there. And these are the same children three years back uh, in the World Diabetes Day program. So we come from remotest of villages, right? But what a good insulin continuous supply, what monitoring and education can do is what we saw observed in the T1D index output is that you can add life, you can add quality of life and survival. And that is something we are aiming for. Thank you so much.